This is the biggest concern with the patch. This little fucking section right here, dude. There's always been a lot of negative talk surrounding solo cash cups, mainly from players who are really bad at them, but there are definitely some valid complaints in there. A lot of these players either weren't around or don't remember where the solo cash cups originated from and what the first iteration of these truly looked like. Back in late 2018 to early 2019, this is when the era of the pop-up cup started. In 2018, there being the Alchemist, Scavenger and Explorer pop-up cups. And then at the start of 2019, one very infamous tournament, the Architect pop-up cup. Now, despite the fact that this tournament was a little bit different from the remainder of the pop-up cups, there was one consistency throughout all of these tournaments, and that was the very questionable format. You see, nowadays we have two round formats, we have placement heavy formats, there are three hours, ten games, usually for an open. Back then, there was a five hour game window, not a three hour, a five hour game window. And rather than having an open tournament that would have ten games in this time, there was 30. So 30 games in five hours. If you think playing the cash cup now is tiring, this was a whole other experience. And because there were so many games available in this five hour window, most players who were doing well in the leaderboards didn't even get close to finishing all 30 games. Now, what this meant was that if you actually wanted to do well on the leaderboards, you would genuinely have to play for that entire five hour window or maybe start around an hour late and get into the low elo lobbies that still existed at the time. Most players who ended up doing really well and getting a ton of points played a roughly between 15 to 20 games, which if you can imagine a cash cup, say a solo cash cup, for example, of 15 to 20 games, five hours long. Could you imagine if that was announced right now? The entire window of time wasn't the only interesting thing either. If you actually look at the format, this is probably one of the most frustrating formats that there ever has been in any Fortnite tournament ever. Firstly, we'll look, is it elimination heavy? Is it placement heavy? You'll notice it's actually quite a placement heavy format with there being a total of six placement points available and only three elimination points available. Yes, I did just say three elimination points because you actually have to get three eliminations before you get your first point. Then when you get to five, you get another point. Then we get to seven, you get another point. So there's only three total placements. So there's actually technically an elimination cap, but that didn't stop people double keying because if you learn anything about solos, people will just fight. Notice you're also only going to start getting placement when you get to a top 10 in a lobby, then it's top three, and then it's when you get the victory royale, you get more placement points. So if you think about this, an 11th place with two eliminations gets you zero points. Zero points for an 11th place with two eliminations. It's similar when you start looking into the duos and squads formats that are there as well. For duos, you need to pick up four eliminations before you get any points and get to the top five. And it's similar thresholds. And then when you go over to squads, you need to get six eliminations. So that's like a, a squad and a half before you actually start to even get a single point for that. And it's only when you get to the top three, top three teams when you're actually going to start to get any placement points for that. So you can imagine trying to play five hours 30 games with this style of format became very frustrating for a lot of players. Nowadays, there's a lot of talk about the cash cup prize pool, but what were these players playing for in these five hours? A pin on their profile if they got 20 points or more, which doesn't exist anywhere. Now, what was that pin for? I have absolutely no idea. And quite frankly, I don't think anyone else has an idea at this point either, because clearly the idea has been scrapped. It's many, many years later. We haven't heard anything about these pins. I'm guessing it was something that would go onto your profile. Maybe if there was like an online tracker, say like Fortnite tracker, you know, you've done well in this tournament, you'd have X amount of pins for Y tournament. But to this date, there's nowhere that you can see these. So obviously the idea has just been fully scrapped. So if you watch my version 7.40 patch that I discussed why it was the best patch ever, you notice I talked about the fact that there was an implementation of leaderboards as this hadn't happened previously. These pop-up cups were all before the leaderboards were actually introduced to the game, which means that there was actually no live leaderboards for these anywhere, except the final Architect Solo pop-up cup. And there's a couple of interesting takeaways, mainly the fact that the guys that were in the top five, all of them ended up going on to get around 5k earnings, 
but more importantly, a guy in 49th was named Lasagna Devourer. There were also other community members who went out of their way to collect manual data since it wasn't there up until this final one. The first one being Donny SC, who managed to create a large leaderboard for a bunch of the Architect Pop-Up Cup in particular, having the solos, duos, and squads members. Now, this obviously is not a full leaderboard because there's only a couple teams and players and solos, for example. However, this is the people who have actually submitted them. So there could be players who have way more and there could be players who have way less. But we do see, for example, in OC, Ian Solos, Gubos, with 94 points total, way above a ton of the other players. And it's interesting to see how many bigger names you can pick up in here. Vinny and Zexro and Joes, who did really well. And I remember these guys were particularly very good when it came to the pop-up cups. In squads, we see guys like Mongrel, Osmo, Dismentos, and Fwexi as well, with 84 points. We can see names like Thomas HD in there, Left Eye, who qualified for the World Cup, Snappy, even Blood X, Shinkin, Stompy, and Zypan as well. There are a lot of names that are still around today that were placing in these cups back then. Out of the four different styles of pop-up cups, the Alchemist, the Scavenger, the Explorer, and the Architect, what was it that made the Architect pop-up cup the worst? Well, this was announced in the version 7.30 update. The settings from the previous pop-up cup tournament still applied to this tournament, which was Siphon, Materials on Elimination, and the Faster Harvesting Rate that we know as the Arena settings now. However, there was a huge caveat. Within this mode, player-built structures can now be edited by any player regardless of this team's status. The community was not too happy about this announcement. However, they did miss a very vital part of this patch notes, which was the direct point under that. This stated, this is an experiment that we'd like to try out in this testing environment, but aren't quite sure of the full impact. We'd love to hear your feedback from the experiences playing with this change. So Epic just straight up said, this is something we want to try, give us your feedback, and we're doing it in a testing environment, which was the pop-up cups. This is an idea, obviously not the editing the people's builds, but having a testing environment like this, that I think is a really good idea and something that we're kind of missing nowadays for major competitive changes to the game. So what was this actually like at the time if you've never played this? Well, firstly, editing walls was actually very clunky and kind of awkward because if both players tried to grab the wall at the same time, there was a bit of a delay, given it was basically ping dependent whoever clicked it first. And it just generally felt very awkward. Build fights became kind of weird because you couldn't defensively play. You couldn't box yourself up at all because someone else could just edit a wall in. So if you were weak, it was really hard to heal because there was just no way that you could get away from your opponent. If you built up, then they could just edit you out and then pick up your elimination. So there was kind of like no counterplay once you'd managed to get the advantage in a fight. Essentially, it meant that if you wanted to play good, you had to be an aggressive player and you couldn't really be a defensive player at all. Which back at the time, remember, a lot of players sucked big time back in chapter one. So generally, the community didn't really like this change from that perspective. These tournaments were also already heavily W key and this did not help at all. So the quality of games got even worse in the Architect Pop-Up Cup in comparison to the Explorer, Scavenger and Alchemist that were before it. High ground became really important in endgame, in particular because you could just edit into someone's tunnel and just pick up eliminations from behind them. There was nothing that you could do in an endgame scenario. Players are up on high ground, you can literally just edit them out too. So it kind of just became a little bit frustrating. High ground became way more powerful, but if someone just tried to edit you out, it was almost over for you. There are a lot of players, creators, pros who tried it, and basically their final verdict was the same as Cypher PK. Nah. However, he did put a suggestion forward that it would be cool if you picked up an elimination on an enemy, all of their builds became yours. At the time, I remember vividly thinking this was a good idea. On reflection, I just don't really think this would work that well. In particular for an endgame scenario where there's a lot of tunnels, you just kind of gain a lot of builds that may now be yours that you don't have to break through in an endgame situation. Just because you maybe picked up an elimination on a guy with 30 HP, you've gained all of this space if the zone ends up pulling back. So on hindsight, I don't really think this is a good change, but this was kind of a lot of the general consensus at the time. This test only lasted five days and was removed in the 7.30 content update, which was exactly three years ago today to the date of this upload, the 5th of February 2019. I do imagine a world where all of this was implemented and what would the skill gap of the game be like now? Back then, when this was tested out, a lot of the player base couldn't even edit a window. Now, with everyone being so much more mechanical three years on, I do wonder what trajectory the game would have gone if this change was actually implemented to prevent people playing so defensively. You may be frustrated by playing solo cash cups, but at least they're not five hours long with 30 games being able to edit other players' builds that you need three eliminations to get an elimination point and get top 10 to be able to get some form of placement. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a lot. Peace.